In this video, we're going to show you how to tone and trace like a pro. This is the generator. This is the toner. Let me show you exactly how you want to use this. Now, all this is not possible without the sponsor of today's video. They did not pay me for this video, but I did get these products. And I'm going to explain why they are so important. I'm so tired of this. I'm telling you, this is why you want to get the O station. This is the O station 2. This is capable of charging lithium ion batteries. That is huge. So we have some nickel metal hydrides and we've got some lithium ion batteries here. Compared to your standard cell batteries, these are not going to leak in your expensive devices. They're not going to leak in your $300 circuit tracers. So to show you what I'm talking about, this is one that I use pretty often. You've probably seen this on the channel a couple of times. I do a lot of lives on how to use these properly. I don't do a whole lot of videos on exactly how you want to set this thing up. So that's what we're going to show you today. Look at that, all nickel metal hydride. And what's great about these is unlike the standard cells, like this garbage here, these are going to leak and ruin all of your electronics. And these things are very power hungry. You can see how many batteries they take. Not just that, this thing also does AAA batteries, which is also very impressive. So once you see how this thing works, you're probably going to run out and go buy it. I'm not trying to make that type of video where it's like, yo, you got to get this. I very seldom ever show you something that I say you should probably just go get. But this thing does lithium ion, it does AAA, and it does AA, and it does the nickel metal hydrides, and then it does the lithium ions in the AA, which is absolutely insane. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is get more batteries in my devices so they don't get destroyed by the standard alkaline batteries. What's wrong with this plug tester? I just bought this thing. I'm literally talking to my buddy on the phone. I was like, these aren't good for inspectors because an inspector is going to keep this in their pocket and it's subject to humidity and stuff. The batteries tend to corrode. Well, no worries because the batteries literally come pre-corroded. Are you kidding me, dude? I was sitting here dead in the water again. Batteries corrode in your pocket because of humidity, and now the batteries come pre-corroded. Perfect. Just like we promised, I'm going to show you how to set this up very quickly. So we're going to turn this on. Right now we're just going to turn it on. We're going to turn our toner on. This is the VDV500 and the VDV123. This is the generator, the 500. This is the toner, the 123. Best bang for your buck. Now you can opt for this set. It is more expensive, but it's worth it because of the sensitivity dials here. We're gonna talk about that right now. What we're gonna do, what I call dial in the toner. We're gonna turn on the toner. I'm gonna show you the wrong way that you're gonna see most of the YouTube videos show you. Then we're gonna show you the right way. This is how most videos will go. Alternate tone right here. If you're lucky, they might talk about this sensitivity light. This is what you're using to tone. Forget about trying to use the noise. The noise is helpful, but you're really looking at this light. This is gonna help you pinpoint exactly what you're looking for. See so the light flashes like that when we get that nice pulse. Going to dial this all the way down and show you the right way to dial this in right now. The best way I can explain this is to attach the black to a known ground source, meaning something that actually has a ground reference. How do you know you have a ground reference? There's a couple of ways. I know this is grounded. I can attach it here and we're going to get a lot more signal out. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about right now. And then I'll explain to you how to get a better ground source or to know you found a ground. So right now, with this attached to ground properly, we're going to bump this up until we see the light. Now we got the pulse. You can see what the light is flashing. If I take the ground off of here, we're gonna lose signal, watch. See how we don't get that light? I have to almost touch it just to barely get that light. So by attaching this to ground, 
You can see where we amplify that signal. Now we're ready to start tracing, and that's how you want to dial this in. You want to attach to a known ground source. You want to dial this all the way down, and then you want to slowly dial this up until you get the light. If you're trying to read through the walls, you might need to dial this up. So picture a wire through the wall here, and we're about this far away. You can dial this up. Now we can trace through the wall. Let's talk about the O Station 2 now, and then we're gonna talk about how to find a good ground source, how to know that you've got a good ground. We're just gonna use our O knife door on here. Comes with the user manual. Got a USB-C charger. I'm curious on the wattage on this. Looks like it's an 18 watt max. Oh wow, that's actually a really nice looking cable. Hard to mistake that one. Then we have the product itself. Okay, first thing I'm noticing, it is substantially smaller for doing a lot more work, which is very impressive. You can see my other row station here. That battery is ready to be used. It's been charged. And you just drop these batteries in the top. It does not matter the polarity. And it'll charge them all. So I'm expecting to see something similar here. We got our AA slot there. Our AAA, this is where the batteries go in. This is for discarded batteries, just like the last one. This will actually put bad batteries in here. Like it says, if the battery looks fine, clean the terminals, reload it. It's been sitting in here for a minute, so it's possible it could have been mid-cycle and I could have unplugged it or something. I'll just go ahead and load that back in there. This is where the fully charged batteries will go. Double A's and triple A's. Pretty straightforward. I like how they made it in L shape. That way you can get it closer to the wall too. Very thoughtful. Definitely going with a more compact. I saw a little red LED on the back there. Uh, oh, green now. And actually this thing has a screen on it. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's got a charging status. This is super cool. So it's got triple A's and it's got double A's. I, I like that pull tab on the top. That is nice. You definitely don't want to be using knives around batteries, especially if they're my own. All right, should we drop these in any polarity? Wow, these are super light too. This is amazing because they're lithium ion, they're extra light. Just drop them in. We can even do reverse polarity. Does not matter which way you put them in. We should start to see a status here on the charging once it gets them into position. Let's get some triple A's in. This is so cool, man. The Klein plug testers and stuff are notorious for leaking batteries. The Klein multimeters. Do not use any of the batteries that come with your Klein tools. Just don't, trust me. Drop these in anywhere. Reverse polarity, it doesn't matter. Look at that, we're starting to get a status. Looks like it's going to take 12. Drop 12 in there. That's what we just dropped. So it's pre-charged on them too, so this should go pretty quick. And we got some double A's, and they are pre-charged too, but if they're pre-charged, this should go pretty quick. So, oh, there we go. Look at that. We got the triple A's loading in. And this is a very safe charger. I've got the data specs on there. I can put them in the description below. There you go, we've got this one at 13%, we got this one at 10%. And yeah, it's, it's actually that easy. Now I would recommend you use your instructions, but basically you got, does this thing have a, no way. 
No way, dude. Oh, light flashlights charge here. Oh, this is insane. I've got an O light on me right now. I got the Arc Pro on me. It just charges like that. That is. That that's it. Yeah, you can see it charging. Wow, man, that is so cool. This one's at fifty nine percent. The this one's at sixteen. This one's at nineteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Sorry, I was reading the instructions and. Uh, A little bit of sidetrack there. Uh, loading the batteries can be any polarity. No need to check polarity. Figure five, take out the battery. It's just like I explained to you guys. I've been using this one for about a year and a half now. And this, this looks amazing. It's also really small. <laughs> it charges your flashlights. I mean, wow, this is amazing. So there's two ways we can do this. One is to get an extension cord. This method tends to confuse some people. I'm gonna show you right now on camera exactly how to do it. You can plug it into a known working circuit. We will take the ground clamp. We're going to attach it to the ground only inside of there. Or you can stick something out of here, a little bit more risky, and clamp onto that. Then you're gonna take this to your problematic area, clamp this to the wire you're trying to trace. You're done with this. As soon as you clamp this to ground, we're using the ground of the building through the extension cord to amplify the signal like we just showed you. This wire goes on the circuit that you're trying to trace now. This just goes on the floor. So let's test that theory. We're gonna use our fancy toner now. So let's turn it on. We got it set to alternating tone. Turn this on to tone mode. Dial it down just like we talked about. We're gonna volume up once. We're gonna to try to get this to the one sensitivity. We're almost there, we gotta touch it for it to go to one. And I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna go up three bumps. Now we got the one. This is how far away we are. To show you that we did attach to the ground, one, you can hear the sensitivity. You can hear the noise. Go less, listen. Increase, decrease. Now when we go here, we no longer get that one bar. So the extension cord method is very effective. A very easy way to tell if you've actually got a true ground is to check voltage. You wanna have what we call potential, meaning a difference. So ground being zero, energized being whatever it is, 120, whatever your voltage is. We can do it here to the hot. See, we're kind of dancing around this thing. We're really not finding the voltage. There you go. So we have to like kind of work to find it. Another good reason why you want a multimeter that's instantly reactive. So just like we had trouble finding this ground, it's possible that we have trouble finding the ground inside of here. It only makes sense. So the best way to know if this is actually touching ground is do we get a reference to the actual clip? That's a very good indicator that this is grabbing the extension cord internally. If we were to shift up, maybe we might lose and not be on that ground. Maybe it's way up here. You see where this thing just grabs the ground really effectively as well. But there's a chance where we might not have it even though it looks like it's clipped in there. The extension cord method is almost foolproof. And remember, we need that ground to amplify the circuit. Okay, batteries are charging. What do you guys think in the comments below? Did you learn anything on how to tone and trace? How to set up your toner? We'll have another video on some troubleshooting tips and tricks on how to actually go about looking for the circuit. But this was strictly how to just get it set up because that requires a video almost in itself. I hope I've explained this as clearly as possible. I've made a few different styles like this before. This one was just strictly, like I said before, on how to set up the toner, how to make sure you got a ground, how to dial it in. After that, it is fairly self-explanatory, but there are some tips and tricks that you can do with a toner that's gonna save you guys a ton of time. So I'd be looking out for that video. Comment down below if you want me to make a separate video on the tips and tricks on how to make a toner work for you the most effective way possible. Big thanks to Olight. Shout out to Olight, man. They make some of the best products in the world in flashlights. They have the best warranty, outstanding lifetime warranty. No questions asked. You break your light, you burn up your light, you smash your light, you drop your light. It does not matter. 
You register it on the app. There's going to be a little Olight number here hiding somewhere, probably this one. And you sign up on the app. You say, hey, I broke my device. And they just send you a new one. They don't even ask for the old one back immediately. I think you have like two weeks to send the old one back. It's the easiest, best customer service experience, hands down. They don't ask you any questions. They just, here's your product. I even told them that I left the flashlight on face down. It was my fault. Burnt it up. And yeah, it's very, very easy to use. And you get a new light, less downtime trying to wait to send yours in. They got some of the best warranties, guys. I stand behind these products. Uh, I believe in them. I have no problem having Olight on the channel. There's a number of flashlight companies that reach out to me daily, sometimes weekly, five or six offers. Um, as long as Olight's around, there's no point in even talking about half of them, guys. So that's the way I feel about that. What do you guys think in the comments below? Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.